joining us now on our book talk segment. Great to welcome. Man, has written a really fascinating book about the presidency, but it's really more about fortunate things that have happened to different presidents. It's called Assassinations, Threats, and the American Presidency from Andrew Jackson to Barack Obama. We're joined today by Dr. Ronald L. Feynman. He specializes in uh, 20th century American history with uh, emphasis on uh, politics and uh, presidencies, and he is taught at Florida Atlantic University, not too far away from us here in Sarasota, and he joined us on telephone. Uh, Dr. Good to talk with you. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, I had a chance to, to read through the book, and I've always been interested in politics myself, and I remember some of what happened here when you talk about uh, uh, you know, the, the unfortunate things that have happened in American history with uh, assassination, assassination attempts, but uh, I guess the one that I remember most vividly would be the Ronald Reagan attempt in 1981. I, wasn't, I was only a little kid when uh, Kennedy was uh, shot, but uh, boy, those things just stay in your mind, don't they? Yes, absolutely. In the case of Ronald Reagan, it, it's really true. If he had worn his bulletproof vest, he might not have been harmed as he was, but thank goodness he recovered. Yeah, that was a, a scary situation. Well, we'll get to that in a minute, but first of all, how did you uh, come to write the book at this particular time uh, on this topic? Well, I'll tell you, um, years ago when I was in college, uh, I had an English class and I had to write a term paper and I showed the Lincoln assassination as my topic, interestingly. And then the following year, the, you know, the Kennedy assassination took place. And of course, who could ever forget that? And from that point on, I followed and studied and was interested in assassinations and even threats and attempts. And I started to do lectures in South Florida on the subject. And then about two years ago, I was doing a lecture and it was advertised on the Internet. And my publisher, Roman Little, field uh, found about the information and they wrote me at Florida Atlantic University on email and asked, would you like to write a book on this subject? So they came to me, not me to them. It came out of the blue and I said, well, why not? I'm retired now. I have a lot of free time. I still teach part-time, but I certainly am not as busy as I used to be. So I figured, why not? So therefore, I spent the last two years, you know, indeed doing this research and getting this ready for publication. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating story that you tell in the book about really a little known or unknown uh, situations that have happened. You go back, of course, uh, uh, to Andrew Johnson and other attempts on other presidents that uh, I didn't really know much about or and some I didn't know at all about. So there's a lot of, a lot of history there that I guess a lot of people probably weren't aware of, that, that, that attempts at the lives of presidents. Yes, a lot of links. And of course, one of the early ones is, of course, Junius Brutus Booth, who was a well-known actor and the father of John Wilkes Booth, who, of course, assassinated Lincoln, actually in 1835 wrote a threatening letter to Andrew Jackson threatening his life. Apparently, that's all it was. But it's interesting to think the father of the later assassin of Lincoln was at least on paper threatening Jackson. Yeah, they were. Uh, it was an acting family, right? That whole Booth family. So they, they, yes, they were quite well known, crazy. right? Yeah. Yes, and, and quite crazy. Yeah, I think apparently. They, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of struck me just reading through the book, and it wasn't that long ago, you know, in, in the terms of uh, history, that uh, really the Secret Service. Uh, had to really be that vigilant to protect the president. I mean, you go back even to Kennedy not having a, a bulletproof car, you think now, that, that, that's insane, but back then nobody really thought that much about it. Well, also he, also he was in a car without a top on it, which right. is one of the factors, and he also was wearing a back brace because of his bad back, so he couldn't have even ducked, you know, it, 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 you, know, when the, uh, you know, when the shots for Oswald came about. Um, so, I mean, that's really tragic, too. But I also say since 1901, when the Secret Service started to protect the president, they've only had that one tragedy and, of course, the near tragedy of Reagan. So considering it, uh, I think they've been pretty lucky. I guess the, the and also one, pretty pretty good at doing what they do. Oh, no doubt about it. And I guess the one assassination of a president that, that doesn't seem to get uh, a lot of, uh, at least a lot of people know much about, it, is McKinley one. I mean, uh, you, you knew he was shot, but you didn't know the story behind it. It's kind of interesting what happened there, right? Well, yes, because he was killed by an anarchist. I guess you call that a terrorist today. And, of course, his vice president was Theodore Roosevelt, the famous Teddy Roosevelt, who became president, therefore. But if things had been different, in 1899, in his first term, McKinley lost his vice president, Garrett Hobart, uh, because of uh, heart trouble. And they were very close. But the theory is if Garrett Hobart hadn't died in office, he would have still been vice president in 1901. And therefore, he would have been president. And we wouldn't even probably know who Teddy Roosevelt was. Yeah, another Long Islander. We were talking before we went on. You and I yes. both from Long Island. <laughs> yes, both from Fall Park. Yes, <laughs> Sag Sagamore Hill out in Oyster Bay. Every every uh, school kid uh, took a field trip out there to see his house, Teddy Roosevelt. I I remember doing it, and they just reopened it after renovation for the you know for the last couple of years. It was closed down. Right. Yeah. 
But yeah, and again, you have a lot in the book about kind of what ifs. It really is kind of fascinating uh, what would have happened uh, if certain presidents were killed that weren't, and, and, and just the history of it, who would have uh, who would have succeeded to the presidency. Uh, some names nobody ever heard of. <laughs> yes, yeah, chapter 17 is about 15 might have been presidents, people would, who would have succeeded had history been different. And some of the names are well known, like George C. Marshall under Truman, uh, John Hay, uh, under under um, under Teddy Roosevelt, both were secretaries of state, but there were also there was also a president pro tempore of the Senate uh, who would have succeeded Lincoln if things had been different. And there's also a couple of speakers of the House, you know, and some of them are really you know pe- names you would never think of. And it's you know it's the kind of thing where you wonder what would have happened if these people had succeeded. And I would also include Spiro Agnew, who later was forced out of the vice presidency. He had a chance at indeed succeeding Nixon had Nixon been harmed by Arthur Bremer. Who who shot George Wallace and was stalking Nixon. Yeah, I didn't realize that. I remember the Wallace situation. I didn't know that uh, there was a connection with him going after Nixon back then. So you uncovered that. That was interesting. Yes, and also John Hinckley, who shot Reagan, was stalking Jimmy Carter in the fall of 1980. Yeah, right. And had he got to be killed Carter, Mondale, Walter Mondale would have become president just like weeks before the election. And who knows, in that kind of situation, it's possible Mondale would have beaten Ronald Reagan and we wouldn't have had Ronald Reagan. So those are all cases that are like, wow, you know, amazing cases. But when you went back to, uh, to research on the, you know, the two most infamous ones, the, the Lincoln and then the Kennedy ones, and a lot of parallels there uh, as well between those two assassinations, a lot of common names, right? I mean, uh, between... Yes, yeah, uh, common names, common age. Uh, the jo- you know, Johnson was Vice President Lyndon and Andrew under Kennedy and under Lincoln. Uh, one thing I point out, though, is I've been asked by others, you know, which, which assassination had the greatest impact? I think Lincoln's because Andrew Johnson was a disaster after Lincoln. Well, Lyndon Johnson, okay, there were people who don't like what he did in Vietnam, but he actually, Lyndon Johnson, followed Kennedy's ideas domestically and really brought them to fruition. So I think he really did follow through on a lot of what JFK wanted to do, but actually Andrew Johnson was a true tragedy after Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, the uh, first president to get impeached. (laughs) Yes. But uh, fascinating to to think the parallels between those two. We mentioned before, uh, as we started, the Ronald Reagan attempt back in uh, 81. And uh, and, and as you said, uh, he wasn't wearing a vest, right? He wasn't wearing a bulletproof vest. Neither was the Secret Service agent who was was injured as well. And it was because they were only going to be away for the White House for a few minutes at the Hilton outside. But even a few minutes can be a few minutes too many. Any error is a problem, you know. And he came closer to death than people reported at the time, right? I mean, that, that, that was not, absolutely. You made yes. him think that well, it was just a wound, and he was okay, but but it was pretty close to uh, end for him. Yes, but also a hundred years earlier, not to the day, but the same year, eighteen eighty one, Garfield was was shot and mortally wounded because the doctors were incompetent at the time; they didn't know what to do, couldn't get the bullet out, and all that, and actually made things worse. So, if Reagan had been eighteen eighty one, he probably would have died like James A. Garfield did. Yeah, yeah, some bad, uh, you know, really not great medicine back then for some of those uh, presidents that were injured. Uh, I guess even McKinley, too, right? He, he may have yes. survived, right? Yeah, McKinley lasted eight days, and in the case of, of Garfield, about 80 days. The thing about Garfield is that World One studies Garfield and have been to his home in Ohio. He seems to have been a real true intellectual, might have been, in theory, the best president after Lincoln and Sir Teddy Roosevelt, if only he had had a chance to actually serve. But he was only in office four months when he was shot and died after two and a half months of pain and suffering. Very yeah. tragic. And even you go up to today with uh, uh, President Obama, and, and, and you hear uh, that, that there's a lot of threats. All presidents get threats, even you know George Bush before that. But of course, all the, all the living presidents have. But Obama's had more death threats than anyone since Abraham Lincoln. And the most recent that stands out is uh, just about a year ago, September 19th of last year, when Omar Gonzalez, you know, actually was able to leap over the White House fence and get into the building, get into the White House. They weren't there, the family, but actually get deep into the White House before he was stopped. And that's alarming. And indicates we need more training, more discipline, uh, more you know, more agents, uh, better better uh, you know, training overall, just better conditions to be able to make sure the Secret Service can do its job. And there has been a crisis in the Secret Service in the last few years with scandals. Yeah, yeah, some uh, people getting too close to the to the White House. That was kind of scary. And also yeah. personal behavior problems of right. some of the agents, you know, which uh, is a problem, you know. But still, I look at the whole history of the Secret Service, and I still think overall they've done a very good job. But one error is one error too many, or one shortcoming. 
It's one short time in two Originally, days. they were just part of the Treasury Department, right? It had nothing to do with protecting the president. Is that right? That's right. They were there to protect the money supply. Yeah. Counterfeit money, yes. And then we need to mention, well, you got a great chapter in the book, too, uh, Gerald Ford, uh, two attempts on his life within nine days. I mean, I remember that. Actually, it was 17 days. 17 September days, right. 75. Yeah, 17 days to September 75, both in California, Sacramento, and San Francisco, and by women. And they're the only case other than Mary Surratt, who had the boarding house where John Wilkes Booth and others conspired against Lincoln and was hanged for it. She could be considered a conspirator. But actually, direct threat would be Sarah Jane Moore, who actually shot at Ford while you know, while the net squeaky from actually didn't shoot at him, but she was carrying a weapon on a person when she was right near Ford. So Sarah Jane Moore was stopped by a Marine who, who you know, knocked a hand and prevented any danger to President Ford. Had he been killed, Nelson Rockefeller, the former governor of New York, right. who had always wanted to be president and had been unable to get the nomination, would have uh, indeed been the president. And that's what motivated uh, Ronald Reagan in 76 when he lost the nomination to Gerald Ford. His group said, we will not back you for election unless you drop Rockefeller, pick someone more conservative, and he picked Bob Dole instead. And later Ford said if he had kept if he had kept Rockefeller, he might have beaten Jimmy Carter. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's all the kind of machinations behind it. That's what's fascinating about uh, what, what happened in history. And again, the name of the book is. Uh, uh, well, assassinations, threats, and the American presidency from Andrew Jackson to Barack Obama. And we've been talking with Dr. Ronald L. Feynman today. And do you have a website, Doctor, or where people get the book? Uh, yes. Well, first of all, you can always go to barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com or booksamillion.com or Roman and Littlefield. Roman, R-O-W-M-A-N.com is the publisher. And if you want to look at facebook.com uh, slash assassinations book, I write articles on the whole subject. Um, this month, September, is a very big month, unfortunately, for assassinations and threats. And I'm writing on the different days of the threats and the situation. I'm writing about it, including just today, September 1st, an known thing in 1903 in Oyster Bay at T.R.'s home, a Henry Wildbrenner uh, threatened the president to try to get into the Oyster Bay Sagamore Hill home, was stopped and had a weapon on him, and therefore in theory was a threat to Theodore Roosevelt at home in Oyster Bay. Yeah. So I'm, I wrote about it today, and I'm going to write on September 5th about the next week you from Gerald Ford and all the other events of September, which is the busiest month of threats in his, of, of all the months of the year. So I'm continuing to write on Facebook.com slash Assassin Nation's book, and also, also I'm on Twitter at Politist, P-O-L-I-T-H-I-S-T. And I think everybody that, uh, not just kids, but everybody should know the history of America, and this is part of the history, and it really, it really reads well, uh, Doctor. I mean, it's, it's Thank you. fascinating I appreciate to read. That. Yeah. Thank well, you. Appreciate you for joining us today on the program, and again, always great to talk to somebody from the same hometown as me, and we'll hopefully <laughs> do it again. Thanks for being yes, with us. Yes, I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for inviting me. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, Please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or DougMiles...